Hello, uh, YouTube. Um, I am here with my good friend Vladimir Suzik, and we're going to be commenting on a video where a Dawa man on YouTube engages with and interacts with a group of Pakistani Christians. So we're going to be examining and evaluating the argumentation of Dawa man. So my name is Imran. Thank you for stopping, Liam. Right? Yeah, Liam. And you're half Jamaican. Yeah. Okay. And I'm in. Me, yeah, I'm Pakistani. Pakistani? Pakistani Seventh day Adventist. Seventh day Adventist, yeah. okay. Uh, interesting, man. Obviously, you explained to me that you guys believe in Jesus as the Son of God, yeah. right? But what is the difference between you and like normal Christians? Before, I'm just interested. Like, well, firstly, we don't drink, we don't, we, eat, we don't pork eat pork either. as well. You don't eat pork either. So. Yeah, but you know, you were asked the question about Christmas. What we believe is that even the Catholics, people who do celebrate it, they say that Jesus was born on, you know, the coldest night yeah. in the winter. And they believe the 25th of December to be that coldest yeah. night. Yeah. So therefore, they just chose that date. We don't believe that Jesus was born on that night, yeah. particularly. This is the, you know the day we choose to celebrate it. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. Because well, everyone has a birthday and Jesus was born, you know, he, yeah. he did come. For example, if you have an orphan or something yeah. and you don't know his birthday, you still celebrate it, right? Okay, yeah, of course, yeah? of course. Okay, but this is the question that's interesting, right? Obviously, depending on who we talk to, atheists or whatever, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll ask different questions. But because you guys are, I mean, is it okay to call you Christians or Seventh-day Adventists? Okay, Christian Seventh-day Adventists, right? I'll ask you a different question. Now, it's interesting because you accept and acknowledge that Jesus wasn't necessarily born on this day, right? Yeah. But do you know where the date, the 25th, came from? I just night. told you, it's the coldest night. Some some people have, might have different views, but what we've been told and, you know, things, the rumors and that, yeah. it's just that it's the coldest night and they just chose to celebrate it on that day. Okay. And even yeah. if his birthday wasn't necessarily on Christmas, it's still the day we celebrate it. Like, you can yeah. celebrate it any time. Right. But here's an interesting question. Uh, of course, you know that Christianity really took off and became the religion uh that like became a very very prominent religion after it was embraced by the roman empire or the byzantine empire right yeah. obviously constantine he you know became well he baptized quite end yeah but the thing is he accepted you know jesus is the son of god and so on and so forth and then from that christianity like it opened the doors for the masses to accept right are you familiar though with what the romans used to worship on the 25th yeah they didn't believe in God. I mean, they didn't follow Jesus. They had their own religion, right? Yeah. Right. But do you do you know what the twenty the twenty fifth of December was actually a very special day for them? Do you know? Do you know? Well, you tell me. I don't. Okay, know. I'll tell you. Right, you and if I'm wrong, you can look it up, right? Because these are historical facts. They used to have a god called Mithras, who they used to worship, right? Yeah. And Mithras, this is in the history books, was they've been worshiping this god from about five hundred years before Jesus even existed. Yeah. It was actually a god that is common to not only the Byzantine Romans, but also the Persians, right? And the story behind this god is that he was born on the 25th. I'd like to have a source for that, wouldn't you, Vladimir? Exactly. He says these are historical facts. What historical facts? There are your sources. Yeah. Like, See, this, this is where... Um, I would really like to have a debate with that one, man, because as soon as you get to the cross-examination, it's like game over. Okay, sources, please. Sources, please. Sources, please. <laughs> yeah, well, at least uh, Shabir Ali, uh, he, he at least provides some sources, even though they are either wildly misinterpreted or from wildly liberal scholars. These people make things up. It's yeah, I mean, that's just completely fictitious. I mean, where, where is he getting this from? I mean, what primary source is he getting this from? And even if this is completely true, and Mithras was born on December 25th, so what? <laughs> Muslim argumentation. What, what else can you expect? Let's continue. But what's interesting is that he is actually the son of God. The son God. Yeah, right. but we don't believe and uh, the Bible, I'm sorry, wasn't written in English. <laughs> son of God, the Son of God. That is a pun that works only using the English language. <laughs> yeah, like uh, he, he was the Son of God. Okay, okay, let's say that he was the Son, um, the Son God, right? H how does that uh, reflect the Greek? Uh, 
he is the Huyos, he is the son, how does that reflect with, like, is he trying to perform a phonetic fallacy here that only works in English or something? I have no idea. I mean, uh, neither do I. Does, and this is really the problem. The, does he really think that the New Testament authors wrote in English? <laughs> yeah, if KJV was good enough for Paul, it was good enough for me, right? <laughs> oh, dear. No, 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 forget, forget that, forget that, forget that. I'm telling you what they believed. I'm not saying this is what you believe, right? I'm saying this is what the Roman pagans believe. They believe that on the 25th of December, there was a God, the son of God was born. His name was Mithras, right? And Mithras, basically what he did was he was brought onto this earth to be the son of God, savior of mankind, and to die for the people. Sources! Sources! I would love to see you in the debate and you just scream in the cross-examination, sources! I want sources! <laughs> yeah. Like, seriously. It sounds quite interesting. some sources. You're making things up. Yeah. What is that? Say that again? You want to know a little history facts? Pardon? I said, do you want to know a little history facts? Go for it. <laughs> I think he needs to know a few history facts. No, 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 but the, the question, the question just, just so you can see the question that I'm trying to ask here, it's interesting, right? That, see, Constantine held the Council of Nicaea. You're familiar with it. You had 300 odd uh, bishops. The majority of them, two thirds of them, believed that Jesus was one man. They followed a man called Paul of Sinasata, right? Who was a Unitarian Christian. And what? Is he serious? What? The majority of the 300, I think it's about 320 bishops in Nicaea. And he, he, he's, he's seriously saying that the majority of them were Unitarians? Is that, is that what you said? Yes. Seriously. I mean, this is why I wanted to address this video. They followed all of some Oh my word. Individuals that were taught from the students of the disciples themselves. For example, one of the greatest scholars of the Christian tradition, the earliest scholars, his name was Origen, right? And he was, he, he has been, he had been taught sh directly from the line of the disciples themselves, right? Yeah. And these people believed that Jesus was one. Yeah. So, so God was one and Jesus was a... What was Origen's connection to the disciples? Origen was a Trinitarian, dude. Yeah, but he said that he was, he was uh, trained through the line of the disciples themselves. Uh, well, um, well, if we go to Hippolytus, not really, he can't really make that argument, honestly. Uh, we can make an argument from like uh, uh, Polycarp, uh, Ignatius, then Irenaeus and Hippolytus. This is pretty much where it ends. Um, origin is... is yeah, he can't really make that argument. But regardless, Origin was a Trinitarian. Yeah. They didn't Paul, they did. Uh, Do you have any quotations handy, Vladimir? Like what? Yeah, can you repeat that? I didn't hear. Do you have any quotations handy? <laughs> uh, do I have any quotations handy as in uh, um, about Origin uh, and his Trinitarian beliefs? Mm -hmm. uh, let me see, I think I do. <clears throat> have this nice uh, these nice notes that I store um, yes I do so uh, this is uh, from um, De Principis on Christ book 2 chapter 2 uh, it says and that you may understand that omnipotence notice this omnipotence of the father and son is one and the same as God and Lord are one and the same with the Father. Listen to the manner of it in which John speaks in the Apocalypse. Thus said the Lord God, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. For who else uh, was he which is to come than Christ? And as no one ought to be offended, seeing God is the Father, that the Savior is also God, so also since the Father is, also, is called omnipotent, no one ought to be offended that the Son of God is also called omnipotent. Does this sound like Tawheed to you, Jonathan? Yeah, that sounds like Tawheed to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So let, let's continue here. Notice this. Saving baptism was not complete except by the authority of the most excellent trinity of them all. 
by naming of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This guy was a, this guy was a Unitarian, right? Yeah. Uh, yep. Of course. Of course, he was. He was actually a Muslim. Yeah, he was. He was a Muslim following Tawhid, and he he always mentioned the ninety nine names of Allah in his writings, and he always condemned the Christians who said that Jesus was the Son of God. Yeah. I mean, right. <laughs> sent by God to the people. That was the original belief. And they were the majority in the Council of Nicaea. However, the minority, right, they said Jesus is the Son of God. Are you being serious? Constantine, right, actually took the side of those who were the minority and those who were the Unitarian Christians were forced into signing the Nicene Creed and those who didn't were excommunicated from the church and exiled. Okay, that is just simply completely, you know, <laughs> I mean, I just don't know where he's even getting this from. Um, I mean, where to start? Like, he's saying, oh, Paul of Samosata, they only believe that Christ was a man. Paul of Samosata was a monarchian. He believed that Christ was God in a perverted sense, but he did. Yeah, um, I mean, uh, let me... Like, let, Arius believed that Christ was God in a perverted sense. I mean, take for example um, Theodoret, who's uh, an ancient writer who lived between 393 and 457, and he wrote in um, regards to Nicaea, Paul, Bishop of Neo Caesarea, a fortress situated on the banks of Euphrates, had suffered from the frantic rage of Lic Licinius. He had been deprived of the use of both hands by the application of a red hot iron, by which the nerves which give motion to the muscles if he contracted and rendered dead. Some had had the right eye dug out, others had lost the right arm. Among these was uh, Paphnitius of Egypt. In short, the council looked like an assembled army of martyrs. And so this army of martyrs who have gone exactly. under, who undergone intense persecution under Roman authority until the Edict of Milan in 313, which guaranteed religious freedom. And they are just going to you know, sit back and let a pagan king come in and decide that he's going to just change their their religion, change Christianity, paganize Christianity. And yeah, so you had people using branches. Uh, so you had bishops using branches instead of their legs, since they had missing legs, to walk into the council and they cut their legs off because they refused to renounce their faith. And here comes this new king. And of course, you're going to sign this, this declaration of capitulation to the king. Therefore, of course, denying our faith. What are these people thinking? Yep. Seriously, and he true. says, and he true. says, these this small major, uh, minority thought that he was the son of God, and this this majority, uh, they were the people who believed that he was just a man. No, every single one of them thought that he was the son of God in some sense. Um, for example, Arius, if you look at his talia, the remainings of his talia, at least, uh, we have that uh, Christ is Yahweh. However, however, he's also the first created. Now, of course, that is contradictory, but yeah. that is what he states. And Aries actually, Aries actually wasn't, um, didn't get to sit on Nicaea because he was a presbyter, a defrocked presbyter. He wasn't a bishop. He was represented by Eusebius and Nicomedia. Yes, by two of his followers, yes. Mm -hmm. Well, the followers, two of the people who were influenced by him, let's just say. Yep. Right, let's continue. And no longer able to practice bishops practicing their real belief. Now I have to ask myself why? See, Constantine was confused. I mean, there was confusion in the empire, empire, right? Is Jesus God? Is he the son of God? Or is he a prophet? He called this council. Who in Nicaea thought he was a prophet? Only a prophet. <laughs> so look, look at this, right? Is he God or is he the son of God or is he a prophet? I say all three. Yeah, all three is the all correct three. answer. But There's no, no confusion. But no, I mean, it wasn't even a debate in Nicaea whether Jesus was only a prophet. No, no one took that position in Nicaea. Yeah, everybody thought that he was God. No, everyone thought that he was at least the son of God. Yeah, at least the son of God, but uh, when it comes to Arius' position from the Talia, uh, it could very well be argued that he thought that Christ was Yahweh, albeit a created uh, Yahweh, which is, which is contradictory. But uh, quite clearly, again, uh, th there is no um, Muslim concept being represented at the Council of Nicaea. Uh, the discussion was about whether the son was of the same or of a similar nature to the father. Uh, it had absolutely nothing 
to do with whether he was just a man or whether he was, you know, uh, fully God. N none of these those extremes. Uh, rather, all parties affirmed that he was God. It was the question of whether he was created, number one, and whether he is of the same or of the similar nature uh, with the Father. Muslim position was non-existent at that time. Yep. Let's continue. To, to ask the bishops. He sided with the minority. Why? You have to understand that Constantine was a politician at the end of the day. Yeah. He was a politician. He had an empire. Yeah, so good, every good politician sides with the minority. <laughs> what a good politician. Empire to run, right? So he knew that Christianity is not going to be very well received by the Roman people because they, want, they, don't, they don't want to leave their pagan practices. Do you see what I'm saying? They don't want to leave these practices. So it's strange that they happen to say that Jesus was born on the very same day that uh, their main God, Mithras, is born. But, but just, 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 I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. We just, You're uh, wait, 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 why, what does December 25th have to do with Nicaea? Ah, uh, this, nothing. <laughs> Yeah, uh, well, he, he's trying basically to argue that, you know, um, uh, where to start? He's trying to argue that um, Mithras was the main Roman god, <laughs> and uh, that since he was born on December the 25th, if Jesus from this new religion was born on December the 25th, it would be easier for the Romans to accept. I think that's where he is going with it. Mm -hmm. But obviously, that's just the point. I know, no, but you're missing the point. I know, I know, I know, I know. But what's the story of Jesus? The story of Jesus yeah. is that he was the Son of God, you know, sent by the Father to die for our sins, which is the exact same story of Mithras. Can we, can we tell you something? Sources. Where are your sources? I would love to, uh, to see you on stage. I, 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 I repeat this, but you, you would be very funny in that, in that uh, uh, style of yours and just say, sources. Sources, please. Keep working some sources. <laughs> just, just, you know, barbecuing the Muslim guy. Yeah, this is why Dawaman won't debate educated Christians. Of course. You know that you're basing this like the dates don't match up and all this. No, no, that's not my point. He's my, saying that the Roman no, 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 God, he was born on the same day. What I'm trying, what I'm, what I'm implying here exactly. I'm saying it's a bit convenient. I'm trying to say that those bishops, they compromise the religion in order to allow the Romans to embrace it. Seriously? After having gone through such persecution so long? Yeah, yeah of course. I mean, it's always like just, let, let's, just give it to the, let's just give it to the Romans. We want the Romans to embrace Christianity, so we'll just give it to their pagan practices. I mean, let's just... Triple face palm, that's all I can say. And that's what history tells us, if we be a real. But the thing is, with Jesus being born on that day, like he was saying, that's the coldest night. That was, in the Middle East, that would be, if they look at that, that was the coldest night. Yeah. And that's when we know Jesus was born. So it's just an estimation Jesus was born around that time. Yeah, but but yeah, also, but you know everything, all holidays and everything like that, they actually got put back about two months. Yeah. Because you know, June, no, um, <coughs> yeah, July, June and August, they never used to exist. Because they introduced these two mums, like there were these two Roman emperors, yeah. Augustus and Julius Caesar. They made these two mums, so all the holidays actually got put, put back about you two months. You gotta remember the Roman calendar, the calendar we have today is yeah. different to the Roman calendar as well. Yeah. So you months. can't be saying that this Roman God and Jesus, you know, are you trying, what are you trying to say okay, about so this? I'm not, I'm not talking about the months at all. Yeah. The point that I'm trying to make, or yeah. the question that I'm trying to ask here, is as follows. Jesus. You said it was okay. 500 before that. 500 okay. years before yeah. this. So here's the, here, here's the point. Here's the point. Here's the point. The well, point. The, the point is that prior to the Nicene Council, right, the majority of Christians believed Jesus to be a prophet, right? These are his. Yes, they believed him to be. Yeah, a we agree. We, they did. We also believe that he that he was and is a prophet. Yeah. So they also believe that he was God in flesh. <laughs> yeah. That's also the majority of the viewpoint before the council. They also believe that he is distinct from the Father and the Spirit. Mm -hmm. and he's the same God as they are. Now, what doctrine does that sound like? That sounds like the doctrine of the Trinity. 
Yes, but wait, it says in Quran 61, 14, that the followers of Jesus, that is his apostles, were superior over the disbelievers. So, so Jonathan, um, these, these, these apostles were, were John, um, we had, um, so just, just take a look at John here. So to try to tie in this with my um uh with my article that i uh wrote on uh, pastor boshoff's site and uh um the lecture that i held on paltok just to try to tie it in since we know that john was one of the apostles of christ um his followers he was also superior of course because um everybody uh, uh all of the christians of course shared the beliefs that the apostles had and um, John was one of them. And we see these followers of John. Um, uh, we see Polycarp. We see Ignatius. And then their followers, Hippolytus and Irenaeus, all being Trinitarians. They all affirmed that Christ is God in flesh. But they were, they were the superior ones. They were the bishops. They were the ones who led the Christians. How does the Quran reconcile that they were called the true believers in the Quran? So they believe in the Trinity and they're the true believers. What should I as a Christian conclude from that? Yeah. You know? And I'm not sure whether Dawaman is just woefully ignorant or whether he's just making stuff up as he goes along. <laughs> Which is a possibility. We must admit. Historical facts. You can look it up. Origin, Paulus and Asata. So, so these Romans believe that Jesus was there. Uh, historical. No, no, no. So the, the Romans have not accepted the, uh, Christianity. Yet. No, no, no. I'm not talking about our. Jesus. Okay, Mithras. 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 Right, right. Yeah. So they worshipped. They worshipped a guy who was the son of a god sent on this earth as a savior. Yeah, he's making it up as he goes along. Die for so the they, people. So, they, so, so here's what I'm yeah. saying. It's Christianity did not have this belief that Jesus was the son of God until after it entered the Roman emperor, Empire, okay. right? So, so what I'm trying to say... Yeah. So, so wait, wait, wait. So uh, in the year 200, we have the manuscript P66, uh, almost a complete manuscript of John, which calls Christ the son of God. Um, so it did not enter the, 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 the Roman Empire before 1313, let's say, when... when uh, let's be generous, right, and say 1313, and we have this manuscript which could be from from the early second century. Um, we also have Ignatius, and, and he is the son of God. Clements, and we have Polycarp, which are there among our earliest. Yeah, of course, and of course, course, the Gospels, the 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 Apostolic Fathers. I mean, that, that's unquestionable. This is a Paul. <laughs> I, I love I love when Doctor. Um, when Dr. Dale Tuggy, uh, I, I think he challenged uh, James White to a discussion, or no, he actually made a comment about James White's, uh, James White's videos on, on, um, on, the, uh, on Ignatius. And uh, James White was just like, anybody who has ever read the works of Ignatius knows that he couldn't be a Unitarian and he just ended it there. And that's true. I mean, if somebody has read Ignatius, how in the world can you arrive to a conclusion that he followed Tawhid? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Well, of course, there is an answer to that. You never read what he said. <laughs> mm -hmm. right. I don't, you don't believe that Jesus Christ was a Messiah? No, we do. In the Quran, it says Jesus was a Messiah. Okay, okay. Because M Messiah... Obviously, you have to. Do you know what the word means? Because some people don't actually know what the word means. It means the. Uh, it never explains in the Quran or in the Hadith what the word means. By the way, <laughs> right? Is interesting. The one that put, um, um, but it says that this Isa, this 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 man who was never crucified, who who uh, who was not God in flesh, this guy. It says that he was the Messiah. Is that our Jesus, Jonathan? What would be interesting, Vladimir, is for a Muslim to debate a Jewish rabbi on is Jesus the Jewish Messiah? Yes. <laughs> I mean, that would be a slaughter. <laughs> what, what does it mean for Jesus to be the Jewish Messiah? Because he clearly isn't um, a conquering king who reestablishes a Davidic reign, um, having... Um, 
I mean, overthrowing the Romans like the Jews were expecting. And he clearly isn't, if Islam is true, he clearly isn't a, um, a savior who dies for the sins of the world. Uh, so, in that, what, so, so, so in what sense can Jesus be described as the Jewish Messiah, according to Muslims? Yeah, that would be a slaughter. I mean, that would be one of the funniest debates to watch ever. But of course, it's never going to happen. So, you know. Well, without getting into the linguistics, we believe that he's a messiah and a Basically, prophet of God. We believe he's born of the Virgin Mary and so on. You, you okay. believe that this Mithras guy, the Romans believed him to be a prophet, right? Yeah, and I'm trying to say that the, that the Christians yeah. at that time compromised their religion and they basically deviated and adopted some of the practices of the pagan Romans in order to allow Christianity to, to flourish. So, in, the so in order to, to, <laughs> to preach Christianity, which is monotheistic religion, um, and we see Paul, who of course advised against um, uh, against these uh, polytheists. Um, they they adopt these polytheistic practices now to appease the Romans to bring them to this system that doesn't support polytheistic practices and and pagan practices. I mean that that makes a lot of sense. Yep. I mean, I'm convinced, Jonathan. I'm convinced. Or, or are you ready to take Shahada? Did you like yes. Yahweh, wa ashadu ana muhla shaitan, ashadu yasuahu Yahweh, wa ashadu ana yasuahu Rabb Muhammadan. Amen. That wasn't the real Shahada, of course. Uh, that translates to I bear witness there is no God but Yahweh, and that Muhammad is a messenger of Satan. I bear witness that Jesus is Yahweh, and that He is the Lord of Muhammad. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> But by doing that, they left the original message of Jesus, which you can still actually find if you go to the Bible. So the Mithras believe, I mean, the Romans believe Mithras was a prophet. No, no, they believe he was a son of God. He was a son of God. Right. Yeah. But then all, and then... So who, you were talking about a prophet earlier on. What prophet were you talking about? Jesus. Yeah, oh, to you he's a no, prophet. No, no. To, the, to the Christians, yeah. before the Nicene Creed, before, you know about the Nicene Council. Yeah. Where's he getting this from? Uh, sources, please. Sources. Sources, please. Can we get some sources? Yeah, before the Nicene Council. You know, in Wikipedia, where there's a little thing where there's a missing citation, it says citation needed. Well, we need to have that here. Yeah, sure, make nice a Wikipedia to... page about this video and just just put a lot of citation needed, citation needed, citation needed things. Uh, in... Just just show how how interesting his argumentation is. I mean, notice this 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 reminds me of of, of certain works of the medicists. He he was born on twenty fifth of December, Mitros, right? He he was um he was the son of God. Uh, he was the sun god. Mm -hmm. uh, he. Like, he, he may well have gotten this from the Zeitgeist film, which has been debunked exactly. and is rejected even by Jesus mythicists, um, <laughs> at least the more serious ones. I mean, yeah, we had we had Mr. Fitzgerald, I think, here. Yeah, I mean, Mr. Fitzgerald, even David Fitzgerald said he's been in my webinar before, even he's much more dead. educated than your average uh, mythicist. Um, yeah. he, and he, he, of he, course, he, he would, of course laugh at these claims. Yeah, he, he would laugh at these claims. I mean, he uh, and Richard Carrier and, and these sorts of folks, I mean, they present Jesus and this as arguments, but even this stuff is just really unsophisticated even for them. Yeah, yeah. So, but of course, when we have a lot of bad arguments presented by uh, people who have no idea what they're talking about, but absolutely no sources provided, who do you think will use those arguments? Our Muslim friends, of course. Yep. 324 CE, something like that, right? Prior to that... Uh, 324, no, 325. Yeah, he missed it by the year. I mean, this is a well-known date for the guys of Messiah. If you don't know the guys of Messiah, it was in 325 AD. You know, the next nothing about church history. Yeah, of course, well, you expect this guy to know church history. <laughs> Seriously. Christian, I mean, if he, if he did, he would be, like, openly apologizing to everyone here. He would take the video down. No. God? And they believe Jesus was a prophet. But yeah. coming back to the point of Jesus being the son of God, yeah? Like, 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 and you said that he's called the son of man. Right? 
But in the Old Testament, Jesus referred, God refers to Adam as the son of God, David as the son of God, Solomon as the son of God, Isaiah, I believe, or Ezekiel as the son of God. And God says the children of Israel are the children of God. God but says the peacemakers. So what I'm saying is that the, no, no, the no, sons no, of no, God. You touched the Old Testament, right? Yeah. You said that Jesus, God called all of these like the son of God. Yeah. But between them and Jesus is a big difference. Jesus was born of a virgin. All those prophets, we believe they are prophets right. as well. They were not born of, you know, they were not born of virgins. That makes them different. Okay. So he can't be like, you know, those prophets okay. that are there. So the argument that uh, that woman is making, well, Son of God is used in different senses in the Old Testament. Uh, David, for example. So, so if it's used in different senses, therefore it cannot be used in the sense of Jesus. Yeah. Well, that doesn't really make sense. It does not say what to her, but I mean, David's referred to as son of God in 2 Samuel 7. Um, and you know, th there's inauguration passages in, in Psalm 2, Psalm 45, Psalm 82, where kings and rulers or people in authority are called gods or sons of God, or titles of deity. Um, but uh, what, how is Jesus using the term son of God? And, you know, obviously, you know, Matthew eleven twenty seven, 27, Jesus says, all things have been handed over to me by my Father, which is, uh, which rings of Daniel 7, the Son of Man receives everything from the Father, receives all glory and authority and dominion and power. Um, he says, all things have been given to me by my Father, and no one knows the Father except, no one knows the Son except the Father, no one knows the Father except the Son, those to whom the Son wills to reveal him, who so claims exclusive and exhaustive knowledge of the Father. And... Just as the Father has exclusive and exhaustive knowledge of the Son, and so he actually affirms his deity, um, and so he claims a very unique and special relationship with the Father as Son of God. And there's other passages as well where Jesus affirms his divine credentials as Son of God. For example, just to give one more example, uh, in Mark, Matthew twenty four thirty six and Mark Mark thirteen thirty two, Jesus says, "No one knows the day to the hour, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father." So he thus presents a an ascending ladder or hierarchy, if you will, from man to the angels and the son to the father, on which Jesus portrays himself as superior to every human and angelic being. So he portrays himself as son of God in a very unique and special way. Not in some yep. uh, manner like uh, David or, or someone else, or even in the Old Testament, the nation of Israel is referred to this as the son of God. For example, in Isaiah 11, one at my called my son of Egypt, uh, but and in the uh, earlier part of the video, we also mentioned John five eighteen, and yeah. of after John twenty twenty eight, the conclusion that uh, um, that John makes. So quite clearly, the title "Son of God," when used of Jesus, is referring to his deity. It is talking about his deity. Um, it is interchangeable with calling him God, basically. Yeah. You have a valid point. Yeah. So, what, so what you're saying is that you believe Jesus is the Son of God because he never had a father. Yes. And that's that's what that's no, your main belief. He didn't have a father. That father. Okay, in but he didn't have a he humanly father. No, no he didn't. But have this is interesting father. because in the Bible, if that's what your logic is, there's someone who has more right to be the Son of God. Because whereas Jesus never had a father, Adam never had a father, nor did he have a mother. Oh my word! <laughs> so that makes Adam. Um... Allah Akbar. Uh, okay, so the Son of God, Jesus Christ, is eternal, not created. Adam was created. So Adam is identified as the Son of God in, uh, in the genealogy. Uh, the point is that um, uh, Jesus is eternal, so he is the Son of God in a very special way, not in the way that Adam should be described as the Son of God. He is the eternal Son of God. Do you see God as your loving father? And by the way, the Quran says that Allah is not a father to anyone. Yeah, so Surah 5, um, 518, uh, Surah 1935, 1988 through 93, uh, 6101, etc. Yep. By that logic, Adam has more right to be the son of God. Yeah, but Adam wasn't born of the spirit. He was made by the dirt of the ground. You know, if you read the Bible carefully, right. even in the Quran, yeah. it doesn't say that he was born through a virgin. Once again, what you said was different. I know, I know. He still had a mum. Here's the thing, here's the thing. Adam, your logic is that Jesus never had a dad, yeah? A humanly dad. Yeah. Adam never had a humanly dad, nor did he have a humanly mum. Yeah, but yeah, his argument uh, for saying 
I mean, the, the Pakistani chap's argument for Christ being the Son of God is not sequitur. Um, he's not the Son of God by virtue of the fact that he was virgin born. He was the Son of God even before the incarnation. Yep. So, uh, I mean, I'm not sure if he's being um, intentionally deceptive. Um, he could be. I'm just looking at his facial expressions, trying to see, um, trying to make a few conclusions, but I'm not sure exactly if he is um, trying to be deceptive. But there are some indications, although there are others that say, you know, that he's just ignorant, that he's making it up. So, you know, well, we just pray that um, God may save him and um, save him from his lies and from his sins. Hey, Mike. He so he has more. The dead. Jesus wasn't made from the dead. He was sent. Should I told you something? No, no, no. Jesus was though. Listen, listen, listen. The the, the spirit was like his soul, yeah? yeah. But yeah, he was still made from what is inside the room of Mary. He was still made from from, from his physical appearance. The idea, appearance. The idea right. is that He's, Jesus was has always been around. Always. He just never came down to earth. Brother, should I tell you something? Let me tell you this really quickly. But, 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 but here's the thing. Where are you getting that from? Because like I said, you're coming back to the story of Christmas. This is the belief of the pagan Romans. So you have to... What, I, what I'd like He to is asking them, where are you getting it from? How can you ask them, where are they getting it from? And you're making things up. Well, more. Or, right, or, or, forwarding <laughs> ridiculous opinions uh, as evidence. And you're asking these people where, where they're getting their information from. How dare you? Yeah. I mean, wow. Is where is like, how come Christian? Like, you, you have to understand, people at, from the time of Jesus, all the way for 325 years, what you're saying, people never believed. The history books are there. Yeah. I mean, Eusebius, who was one of the, he was one of the first. Uh, Eusebius. Oh, dear, not Eusebius. Eusebius is the guy who. This is just. I mean, this is just beyond words, honestly. Beyond words. Church, right? Yeah. His, his historical fathers of the church. I mean, you can read his works. Like this, this is a, this is a fact. Generally speaking, they did not have this belief, but they randomly happened to adopt this belief from the Romans. I'm saying they randomly happened to adopt this belief from the Romans. Just random. Just randomly happened to. Is it justified that you are following a belief of a pagan religion? That's what. No, that's we didn't. Because Jesus came, he said he was a son of God. But where did he he say? didn't say it, but you know. He, implied it. he didn't just imply. He said it. He implied it through the way he is lived. This, John ten thirty seven. John ten thirty seven. I mean, he explicitly said that he is the son of God. There's many places where he says it. That's a pretty like important fact for him to say clearly. That's like, the thing, he didn't, like he in the Quran, I, I will want to hear it He would have been yeah, he he did. Did. Sorry, Vladimir. Yeah, it is important. And that's why he did it. Mm -hmm. He would have been killed. So he has to spread his word. If he says that, in those days, yeah. the days we live in now, there's law, right? Yeah. In this country, you know, there's law, right? In those days, you could have said anything. If he said that, oh, I'm the son of God, he would have been slaughtered okay. straight away. So let me ask How's you, he going to spread his ministry if he just said that? Yeah? Let, let, me, ask you, let me ask you a question this way, yeah? Say, say, for, say, for example, that... Say I'm a prophet, yeah? yeah? I'm not, by any means, nor am I claiming to. But say I'm a prophet. And say these guys are my disciples, yeah? Hey man, you be a prophet and no. you be the Okay, disciple. sure, that's a miracle. Okay. No, 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 I'm not, that's the point, right? <laughs> Don't let him give us a talk. But here's the thing, like say, say these are my disciples, yeah? Now I say to them, I teach them some things. I teach them, I'm a prophet, God is one, worship God, and that's the end of story. And for 300 years, they believe this. Then after 300 years, they adopt another belief. Who, who knows How better? How many times do you repeat a lie for it to be considered true? Well, as has been said, that uh, a lie travels halfway around the world while the truth is getting its treasures on. <laughs> the bishops who interpret the Bible how you are, or those who I actually taught by my own hand, by my own tongue, I actually taught them, who knows the, the scripture better, them or those who came 300 years later? Obviously the ones, you know? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, John, 
he starts off his gospel by saying that Christ is God and that, that he became flesh and then that he is the lamb who comes for the sins of the world. And then previously in, in 18, that he, that he is the, the monogenes teos, the, the, um, the unique God who has came to reveal the father, alluding back, of course, to, um, to many passages in the old Testament where, where we see the angel of the Lord, um, uh, who is also called the Memra, the Logos, uh, who who um, revealed the Father to the people, things like that. And here, here we have his his disciples, uh, Irenaeus and and sorry, Ignatius and Polycarp. They they preach that he's God in flesh and that that he came to die for for the sins of 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 the people. And here here we have this uneducated man from the 21st century trying to say that this belief has not been there until the Council of Nicaea, when the Council of Nicaea, everybody in the Council of Nicaea agreed that Christ was God in or the a son of God. sense, or the Son of God. Yeah. I mean, everyone, everyone agreed that he was the Son of God, but in what sense was that? Yeah. yeah. The only thing. I mean, I think only two bishops out of the bold with Ahid. I think only uh, two bishops out of the three hundred and twenty, or whatever the figure is. Um, yeah, the two, and and none of none of the two hundred, none of the other bishops, sorry, were were um, uh, been confused or or none of them accepted the yeah. the theory of Arius. Uh, only the two who came to represent him but, were the ones who actually uh, did so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It had their doctrine pretty straight and, and sound back there. So. so that's what I'm saying. Those who are with, those who are with Jesus, yeah. they worshipped him in this way. They didn't worship him. No, no, sorry, sorry exactly. They yeah, didn't worship they didn't him. Worship they, they believed him in this way to be a prophet, yeah. to be a prophet, not to be a teacher. There he had a, a little, you know, Freudian slip. I'm oh, sorry, I can't pronounce it in English. Freudian slip yeah. in there, right? He accidentally said what is true throughout his lies. <laughs> yeah, they, they did worship him. <laughs> exactly. And of course, this is why I said, quote, unquote, Christians, they aren't really Christians. Yeah. Okay, okay regardless, I mean, to me, or tomorrow, or potato, or potato, but the point that I'm making is that he wasn't the son of God. If, if, if he was the son of God, they would know better than me and you. Okay, so what is Jesus? And Jesus, how can he not be the son of God? So you say he's just a normal, normal man? No, of course not. Jesus is the Messiah. That he is... Him. What separate? He was born of a virgin. But that's a miracle. Okay, so how many miracles? If it's, if, okay, there was lots of miracles. There were miracles such as, you know, people coming back to from the... Dead. Believe that. It's yeah, in the Quran. That, that miracle keeps happening. You know, some people have that power. They bring the dead back. There is the, the resurrection of Lazarus in the Quran. Yeah. Uh, not not exactly sure, but I'm pretty sure that it isn't there. Yeah. Huh. He has that power. So he, he, must, he might mean miracles in general, but he's very sloppy with his wording. Mm -hmm. Permission of God. No, but how many how, Jesus? He he. Do you remember Lazarus? <laughs> do you know about yeah, Lazarus? Yeah, Lazarus? Jesus brought him back to life from the dead, yeah. right? Okay. In the Quran, do you, have you seen more miracles like people <laughs> coming back from the dead to life? No, the Quran mentions Jesus brought the dead back to life. Exactly, but that was not one, but many, right? I, I don't know about the number, but it mentions that. Exactly, with the, but, but, it's, many, but here's what it says, with the permission men, of God, the he brought the dead back to life. But how many men do you know that are born of a virgin? Only one. Yeah, but I, but like I said, I know of a guy who was born from nothing. Even, even you believe in the Quran, you believe as well, right? Jesus was born of a virgin, right? Yeah. Virgin Mary. I'm no other person was born of a virgin. If you're talking about miracles, miracles can be anything. Miracles can be anything for <laughs> me standing here and then flying, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Okay, but then that could happen to anyone else as well. But can anyone be born from a virgin? But here's the thing, here's the thing. You're, you're taking one miracle and you're basically like, it's like you're holding to it. Moses split the Red Sea. Can anyone Brother, split the Red Sea? Everything that sir, 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 sir. Can anyone, like what I'm saying is Moses split the Red Sea. Yeah. To me, it's like, that's a fantastic miracle. You're, you're splitting the Red Sea, right? You've got no connection between the sea, right? Yeah, yeah he's doing that. He's able to do that. Like, 
what's what's like why why, why what is, what's so special about one miracle that you that you look down upon another? But the point that I'm making is that God has the ability to do whatever He wants, exactly. right? He can do whatever He sent us these miracles through His prophets. But God could have made you know like other prophets had a father, right? God could have given Jesus a father as well, but yet Jesus didn't have a but neither did Adam. Logical father. Okay, can I tell you? Listen, listen. In Islam, there is absolutely, well, of course, we are not arguing that he is the son of God uh, only because he was born of a virgin, right? He was the son of God eternally. Uh, but but in, in defense of these people, um, in the Quran, there is absolutely no reason for, for Christ to be born of a virgin. Um, and, and his argument that the, the, the Muslim guy is presenting is, you know, well, well you know, uh, Adam, Adam, he, he is born not of a father or a mother. Yeah, because he's the first human being. He couldn't have a father or a mother. But there, there, there was, it was perfectly reasonable for Jesus to have um, a father and in the Islamic theology, of course. And yet he didn't. So why is that? They say, oh, to demonstrate the power of Allah. Okay, well, no, it, it didn't demonstrate the power of Allah. All it did was, was help Mary to be accused of, 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 of being a whore. It, it helped absolutely nothing in the, in the sense of glorifying Allah. So, so the argument makes no sense from the Muslim side. Absolutely. Can I tell you what I was going to teach can I tell you what our scholars tell us? They said if you look at Adam, he was made from no other human being, right? But you look at Eve, she was made from a man because she was made from the rib of Adam. But you look at Jesus, he was made only from a woman, right? Not from a man. So, so, so the reason, the reason, one of the explanations they give for this is that the reason God did this is to show us his creative capacity is limitless. He can create you with no man and no woman. He can create you from just one man. He could create you from just one woman. He can do whatever he wants. But what you guys have done is you've, t you, you've twisted that. You see what I'm saying? And you've adopted a pig. What I'm trying to make you understand is that this You're belief is a pig. pig. No, no, no. But respectfully, respectfully, right? I don't mean to offend you. <laughs> no, but it is a pagan right. belief though, isn't it? It's not. That's what you think. To us, it's not. To us, you can say that your belief is pagan because you don't believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So you see, this is just... Okay, okay. By definition, by definition, by definition, Definitely. we are not pagans. Because no, we don't, no, we don't, no, 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 what I'm saying, no, what I'm saying, no, 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 Excuse me, they did. <laughs> wow, it, th this is why I wanted okay. to cross the comment on the video. I mean, it's just, we, we could just sit here, let the video play, and just keep saying sources, 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 please, sources, sources, sources. Because he's, he's making things as he goes. I, right, so Luke 24, Jesus, after the post resurrection appearance to the disciples, leads the disciples out to Bethany, and then ascends. And then the disciples, and the Greek word used is proskinesantes, which means having worshipped. And the Greek verb proskineo, in a religious context, means to worship. Now, in some contexts, it can mean to kiss one's hand out of reverence or respect or to bow down. But in a religious context, it means to worship. And the religious context of Luke 24 is clear because it's post-ascension. Jesus has already ascended into heaven. And so they, they give him worship. Uh, and in John 20, 28, Thomas, one of the disciples, worships him as my Lord and my God. Literally, the Greek is rendered the Lord of me and the God. Yeah, and for example, when we, see, when we see John fall down to an angel in Revelation 22, 8, um, and the, the word used again is proskuneo, uh, what, what do we see the angel doing? What, what do was do that. To say? Don't do that. Do not do that. I am a fellow servant with you and your brothers, the prophets, and with those who ke keep the word of this book. Worship God. Yeah. And, and what's the word? Wait, what's the word used in Revelation 22, 9 when, when, when the, um, the angel rebukes John for worshiping him? What, what word does the angel use? Proskineson. Form of proskuneo. Yeah. 
Okay. Same word that is used of Jesus when his disciples came to him. And they worshipped him. They fell at his feet to worship him. So uh, let me just go, before we continue, let me go through uh, Matthew um, 28, um, 17. So it's the same word is used. So it says, Kai idontes auton proskinesan hoide edistasan. So the same word is used. He worshipped him, however some doubted. And does he rebuke them? No, he goes on to say that he has all power in the heavens and the earth to rebuke those who didn't worship him. Yep. And, and, and notice that uh, Mark, who was a disciple of the apostle Peter, who, um, according to um, Habeas, according to Irenaeus, um, according to Clement of Alexandria, according to Tertullian, Carthage, um, and uh, you know, uh, it was was a wrote down the the preaching of Peter, and just the martyr even refers to the so-called memoirs of Peter, and there's in, in his uh, um, dialogue with Trypho, and there's good reason to think that the memoirs of Peter are in fact Mark's gospel, because he mentions two episodes that occur in the gospel of Peter, namely the sons of Zebedee being renamed Boanerges and Simon being named Peter. Both of those are in Mark. Neither of them is in the extra fragment we have the Gospel of Peter. And the Boanerges incident is only in Mark, which suggests we're dealing with Mark's Gospel, which comports with the other evidence from these other sources. Um, and then there's internal evidence, which Richard Balcom in his Jesus and the Eyewitnesses documented that Mark is actually based upon the t testimony of Peter. And Mark was actually approved by Peter, it was a was a companion and associate with Peter. And Mark affirmed the deity of Christ. In Mark 1, verses 2 and 3, for example, he quotes from Isaiah 40, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prayer of the way of Yahweh, and make his path straight. And then the one whose way has been prepared for by the message, by the, uh, the forerunner, namely John the Baptist, is identified as Jesus, because John the Baptist says, after me comes one who is greater than I, and that person is introduced as Jesus. And so we have the deity of, of uh, Christ affirmed in Mark. And then we also have Paul, who affirms the deity of Christ. And, and Paul, as I have documented in my articles and in my debates and talks, uh, was um, approved by, and he approved of, the eldership of the Jerusalem church. And since Paul affirmed the deity of Christ, by extension, this just very strongly, that the disciples likewise affirmed the deity of Christ. Amen. And by the way, if the disciples affirm the deity of Christ, Islam is false because Surah 352 and 6114 tell us in the Quran that Jesus' disciples were Muslims. Yeah, they were the true believers. So they were the true believers. They believed in the Trinity. What should I think of the Quran? Yeah. Right? Yeah, and this is highly problematic for Islam. And also it's problematic for another reason, because if the disciples were believing in the deity of Christ, then it raises the question, well, where did they get the idea from? And you have to explain that, especially in view of the Jewish view of crucifixion, the Jewish view of the messianic expectations, and the Jewish concept of God. Um, well, you know, it, it could be argued that Allah deceived them into believing all of these things because it says in, in 354 that Allah is the greatest of all deceivers mm -hmm. in the sense of the, of the crucifixion. So they thought that they crucified them. Um, they deceived in order to crucify him. Uh, but Allah deceived more. And Allah is the greatest of all of those who deceive. So it could very well be that uh, they were deceived by Allah into thinking that you know this um, this crucifixion took place, and that they were deceived by Allah to think that Christ resurrected, appeared unto them, and that he uh, he taught them. And it could also be that Allah deceived them into thinking that Christ said that he you know would die and then be resurrected, and that he uh, he is the God in flesh, and that he you know, he came to die for our sins. It could be that Allah deceived all of us into it, right? 
Yeah, I suppose it could be. But I think, I think the best... It's not that Islam is true, right? Yeah. I mean, I think the best explanation for those uh, data <laughs> points is that Jesus himself claimed to be God incarnate. Otherwise, how would um, the disciples come to believe that in view of those factors? Um, and if you say that Allah deceived them, then this really says a lot about the moral character and all a lot. Yeah. So just 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 showing the ridiculousness of the Islamic position. It's I mean, really, how with all this information available today, how could somebody be a Muslim? Seriously. How? Well, this is how. Through deception, through deceit and misinformation. Yeah. That's how. Yeah, and the solution to the problem of Islam is correct information, dissemination of correct information. Exegesis, the, the word that Muslims fear so much. <laughs> yeah. The Gospel of Thomas, are you familiar with it? The Gospel of Thomas. They found it recently. The Gospel of Thomas. Basically, it's... The Gospel of Thomas in which Jesus turns Mary into a man because only woman, <laughs> every woman who wants to enter the kingdom of God must first make herself a male. The Gnostic Gospel from, from the late second century. Oh. <laughs> I mean, yeah. What else to comment? Seriously. Yeah. It's a sayings gospel and there's very, very strong Gnostic um, undertones. It's, it's quite well, you know, Islam borrows a lot from the Gnostics, so it could be that, you know, Dawa Man sees them as, as his heroes of, of the early ages. Gnostics are not your friends, Dawa Man. Yeah, Gnostics are definitely not your friends, Dawa Man. <laughs> and, uh, like, but, but yeah, so, so the Quran, for example, in, in Surah uh, 532, uh, where it mentions that uh, whoever kills one soul, uh, it is as if he killed the entire mankind. Uh, he, they actually got that from from the misinterpretation and a rejected uh, rejected interpretation of Rabbi Elazar uh, in, in Sanhedrin thirty seven, who taught that when uh, when Cain killed Abel, it is uh, then that the entire mankind was killed. Of course, it was it was rejected as illogical. Uh, and of course, it, it is. It is uh, if they want to argue that um, you know it, it was a revelation from Allah to Rabbi Elazar, and therefore Rabbi Elazar is at a soul of Allah. While Sunni Islam holds that there were no messengers of prophets or prophets between uh, <laughs> Jesus and Muhammad, and that there are no prophets after Muhammad. So, uh, number one, we see that this is a commentary of the rabbi that was rejected by everyone else because it had no rational basis. It argued from the plurality of the word blood, um, but it had no rational or exegetical basis. Um, and and furthermore, um, it 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 uh, the rabbi himself did not, of course, claim that it was divinely inspired. And the Sunni Islam itself would contradict that if they thought that it was divinely inspired. So uh, it, there can be no other argument made other than Muhammad's ignorance about the Talmud, and therefore he thought that this was the scripture, and that's why he put it. Uh, put it in uh, he copied from the Talmud it is very telling of course because the context of the verse is a story about who Cain and Abel <laughs> so yeah oh, uh, are you familiar with the hadith the hadith is basically our narrations about the Prophet Muhammad peace upon him but yes I am they're hilarious <laughs> directly from the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him they, they wrote down exactly what he said to teach us exactly what he said the Gospel of Thomas is like that. It's got narrations of Jesus. It's actually got what wait, wait, wait. Did they say they wrote down what he said? No, they didn't. They, they transmitted it orally and write it down. Um, so, so the hadith are, are oral transmissions from, from knee to knee, as we would say. Um, and that's, that's shown, of course, in the, in the Isnad, who got it from who. And of course, just as you can make up a hadith, you can make up an isnad. Yeah. Um, but um, but in the case of 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 the line from from John to Hippolytus, 
we have a written uh, we have a written is not of of the, of the uh, narration let's say so and by the way in what other field beyond the field of islamic studies within the muslim community specifically or is Dan Chains taken seriously in any field of historical investigation? No, actually, um, the, the, the kind that the, the, the oral transmission uh, and the hadith that Muslims would call sahih, uh, the, the entire concept and the entire grading system is laughed at by serious historians. Mm -hmm. um, the, for example, we, we can take a look at the works of Patricia Corona and we can take a look at, at the works of our fellow apologist, uh, Jay Smith, who wrote extensively on, on the topic of, of early Islam. Um, so, yeah, it's, 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 pretty, uh, it's pretty ridiculous that they would consider these things to be reliable records of, of the life of Muhammad, let's just say. But of course... It's been quite they, consistently back to Arizona. Uh, can you... I said, if you employ it consistently, it backfires on you as well. Okay, so I, I think you said that it backfires against me, did you? I, I said it backfires against the Muslim. And the, oh, yeah, yeah. Because uh, if you accept it consistently, then you have to accept our writtenness in genes, which will then <laughs> undercut your Islamic foundation. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, continue. Oops. And to me, that's more authentic than what any Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John said, especially when you don't even know what their names are, right? Now, it's interesting. Do we not know what their names are? I would argue that we have good reasons. Yes, we have very good reasons to... to, to um, yeah, traditional authorship. Uh, yes. So, um, I, I think it would be much, much worse uh, for a Muslim to, um, to try to argue that Muhammad was the author of the Quran, for example, especially when we, when we have many indications that not only was it written by uh, several different people, um, but also that it, it um, let's just say that it was added and subtracted from in a very um, heavy fashion. Yeah. Let's just put it that way. Let's just put it that way. Because Jesus, it, Thomas said that Jesus said that when I, when I leave, the one that you go to is James. He's basically saying my predecessor, the one who's going to come after me is going to take care of you, Lord. Is a predecessor the one that comes after? <laughs> no, predecessor is the one that comes before, but that yeah, aside. But it's James. Uh, James is my second in command. Misquote. And if you uh, misquote, mispurpose, and this, you know. It was where you went straight. Muslim. Right? That's interesting. Do you know how James died? <laughs> Historical facts. James, the disciple. You tell me, brother. It's your religion, man. Brother, you tell me. I'll but give you, you a your chance. You, I'll give okay. you a chance. Okay. He was me, thrown off the temple wall of the temple in Jerusalem. Yeah. Do you know? Did he just confuse James the disciple, or there's two James disciples? But did he just confuse James the disciple, James the brother of Jesus? I think he might have done. Why? Yeah. Well, uh, we, we see often, for example, um, like. Uh, I think it was the debate between um, James White and uh, another Muslim gentleman where he mixed up uh, John the Apostle with John the Baptizer. Oops. Yeah, I've seen that one. Oops. Yeah, you see that. that. This will take place after John was placed in prison. <laughs> and he said so, it could be written by John the Apostle. John's Gospel can be written by John the Apostle because it has this sort of narration. And James White says, yeah, this is a different job. And James White is like, these are the basics. If we don't know the basics. I, I just love James White. Anyways, let's continue. I think it's a um, second century church historian um, preserved in Eusebius who tells us that he was thrown from the temple mount and then bludgeoned to death subsequently. Jo Josephus tells us that he so was So wait, you would accept the accounts of Eusebius when he says, for example, that um, uh, he was thrown off the temple, but then he rejects the accounts of Eusebius when they say that John was the author of the Gospel of John, for example. Well, similar, of course. I'm not saying that he did actually say that, but there are many, um, many for example, he would say that uh, uh, Irenaeus was, was the disciple of, uh, of Polycarp. So... 
if that is the case, then why doesn't he accept that? It's just, yeah. And, and you see, he's actually quoting Irenaeus, saying that he's the disciple of Polycarp. Yeah. So. God and follow Jesus as a prophet, and the Jews found that blasphemous because they didn't believe Jesus to be the Messiah, right? This is historical evidence. He was not thrown off the temple wall for believing that Jesus was the Son of God or anything like that. And what's interesting is that that's how he died. He died believing Jesus was a prophet. And Jesus said in the Gospel of Thomas, is there. Um, okay, if we're talking about James, uh, brother of Jesus, if you go over to um, James chapter 2, we can learn a little bit about James's view of the identity of Jesus, where he says, um, my brothers, show no partiality as ye hold the faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory. Here's the Lord of glory. Is that not a title of deity, Vladimir? Can you repeat that, bro? I said in James chapter 2, verse 1, my brothers, show no partiality as ye hold the faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory. The Lord of glory. Is that not a title of deity? Yeah, that's the title of deity. Uh, uh, the God of the Old Testament is the Lord of glory. Mm -hmm. Let's continue. Sorry. Uh, basically, his bar's going down and it's gone past 20 minutes. Okay, so. okay, okay. Can, can it's okay, we can talk without the mic. Yeah, we can talk without the mic. But do you get the point? Though? All right. Well, I hope this has been uh, useful to our viewers and we hope to um, the, the catches for our, our next session as we continue um, to review these uh, Muslim videos. Thanks for watching.